I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans, and this is so important to me. President-elect Trump, sir, I am sending you this personal video because I want to cordially invite you to my home. The reason why I want to do this is that, the truth be said, you've been really concerning me over the last couple weeks. Now, I didn't vote for you. However, as an American, I promised that I would do my best to try and see if maybe uh, you could do the right thing and could be a refreshing change to the political system. However, over the last couple weeks, when I've been watching TV and seeing things like hiring oil tycoons and major billionaire CEOs, I'm starting to get really concerned about what direction we're going in, where it pertains to renewable energy and getting away from fossil fuels. So here's my home. It's a 1955 Cape Cod. It may look normal to you or many people that are driving by. I've been making America great a long time ago. This house is a net zero home. What does that mean? It means that I make all the power here on site, and that includes my car. So how do we produce all this power on site? Well, first off, can't, it's really difficult to show here, but we use geothermal heating and cooling. Essentially, we use the ground to transfer heat back and forth, depending upon the season, to heat and cool the house. Now this system, this geothermal system, can be used anywhere in the U.S. Here is my solar thermal system. This does about 75 to 80 percent of all the hot water needs in my home. I have a family of four. This system here could be built in Wisconsin, in Pennsylvania, in Ohio, anywhere where their jobs are needed. Take a guess where most of the systems are built now in the entire world. China! Exactly. This is my solar array. It's 13 kW. It produces 100% of my power during the course of the year, including my car. So none of my money goes overseas. None of my money supports terrorism. So here's my electric car. I almost never use the backup gas engine, so I'm unaffected by gas prices. And when I do charge the battery, I'm using the solar panels, so the car is essentially running by the sun or by American-made electricity. So who am I, President-elect Trump? Am I just some hippie liberal tree hugger who thinks this is a great idea? No, it couldn't be further from the truth. I'm a career firefighter. I'm a blue-collar guy. I worked with my hands my whole life. And the truth be said, I never went to college. I have a high school degree. And I've heard you specifically say that the smartest and the most loyal are the uneducated. I love the poorly educated. We're the smartest people, we're the most loyal people. Well, please, prove me, prove that to be true. Listen to what I have to say. Let me explain. Come visit my home. Let me show you why this is the future of this world, of the planet, and how we're going to survive in the 21st century. So, President-elect Trump, you have three major problems you're going to need to solve. And I'm suggesting renewable energy will solve all three of them together. The economy, jobs, 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 the ever-changing dynamic of terrorism, and finally, the global catastrophic impacts of climate change. Okay, so let's start with the economy first. So let's look at this U.S. jobs graph. It shows here how much solar, oil and gas, and coal mining are producing jobs in the U.S. You can see here by the blue line that solar is really starting to take off. But right now, they're all generally in the same area of job production. So this graph is everything you need to know about jobs in the future for solar. So in 2015, oil and natural gas, coal, and solar were essentially tied three ways for jobs. Except oil, natural gas, and coal make up 80% of U.S. consumption, whereas solar makes up 0.6, less than 1%. So think about that. If 0.6% has the same amount of jobs as coal, natural gas, and oil, imagine if solar went to 5%, or 10, or 50, or 75. It would be an economic boom the likes we've never seen before. And these jobs don't explode. They don't leak into the Gulf of Mexico. They don't cause asthma. 
They don't catch your sink on fire. They don't destroy your neighborhood. And, and look, we all believe in environment, and we believe in, I mean, my primary thing with environment, immaculate air, beautiful clean air, and crystal clean water. And by the way, we didn't even discuss the jobs related to solar thermal, or geothermal, or wind, or wave, or hydro, or any of the other new technologies coming in the future. Mark my words, renewable energy is the next industrial revolution. Last point, renewable energy is now cost competitive in most cases with fossil fuels. To go back to burning coal, like the Chinese did in 1500 BC, or oil in the 1800s, is insane. But it's also going to put the U.S. behind economically when the rest of the planet moves towards cheap, clean, and superior technology. The Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stones. Terrorism. I won't suggest for a minute that this isn't highly complicated or multidimensional. However, it cannot be denied that occupying foreign lands for the sole purpose of securing our oil interests has not served this country well. And in many cases, these radicals hate us, not because of our freedom, but because we are occupying and meddling in Muslim lands. And this has been going on for 50 plus years. Remember when Saddam Hussein was our ally before he became our enemy? Even Osama bin Laden was our ally before he was our enemy. Through the use of renewable energy, we must become energy independent and remove the burden on the young men and women of our military. Imagine if we had spent these trillions of dollars on U.S. infrastructure and renewable energy. The country would have been energy independent by now. This never-ending nightmare has to stop. Climate change. President-elect Trump, sir. As I mentioned, I am a career firefighter, but I've also worked several other jobs in order to provide my family with the American dream. And in doing so, my family and I have been able to travel around most of the United States and a little bit of the world. At this point, climate change isn't something you just read about anymore or something that's going to happen in the distant future. If you own a window, a TV set, or travel around, there is overwhelming evidence. And we witnessed this no matter where we went. Sequoia trees, growing here before Jesus Christ was born, are threatened. Montana's Glacier National Park, a park named after their glaciers, likely won't have them in five years. Lake Powell, Arizona, along with the rest of the Midwest, suffering from drought. Yosemite National Park, California. We could barely see Half Dome because of the smoke from the forest fires in the area. Ask anyone that lives out west and they will tell you. The fires are bigger and more often. Key Largo, Florida. I was just here. My friends who have a home here for 30 years just bought an SUV because when the tide comes up, they can no longer make it back to their home because of flooding. I don't mean a storm. I don't mean a hurricane. I'm talking about the moon. Iceland. We witnessed with our own eyes and spoke to the Icelandic people, hearing stories of the drastic melt and altering temperature changes there. Greenland, we flew directly over the country and witnessed with our own eyes the rapid and large-scale melting. Mont Blanc, France, here we stood where just 30 years ago the ice was hundreds of feet higher. We then went inside these glaciers to get a hands-on feeling for what's going on. Venice, Italy, ground zero for climate change. Many first floor apartments can no longer be rented. And the city is spending billions of dollars creating a barrier system to prevent flooding, both now and in the future. 
As a fireman, I was offered a private tour of their main headquarters. They told me that during the high tide, sometimes they can't make it to the fire building because they no longer fit under the bridges. And again, not because of a hurricane or a storm. And finally, Alberta, Canada, where we boarded huge 6x6 off-roading vehicles. It was a magical day. We drank the glacier water. We walked on an ice field. And on the way home to the hotel, managed to see one of the rare gray wolves of Banff National Park. But the sad part is that much of what I have visited may be gone by the time my boys and your younger son are old. So please, President-elect Trump, you said you would be president for all Americans. Please be a man of your word. Unleash the renewable energy economic boom of our lifetime. Unleash it in our inner cities. Unleash it in rural America. Unleash it where fossil fuel working Americans are hurting. Create policies where corporations can transition from black energy to green energy. So the ball is in your court, President-elect Trump, and so is my invitation. Hope to see you here.